So a lot of you probably don't even know that uh, Xiaomi has released another notebook. Now this one here that I'm going to be unboxing and checking out today is called the Mi Notebook. That's it. There's no Pro. So we have the Pro model, which I've got right here. Fantastic laptop. Really do like it. But what we have here that I'll be checking out today is the, you could say the budget version of it. So this one is plastic, but it does have a numerical keyboard. And it has two main key reasons to go for it. Not probably the spec, because it's not super specced out. I was hoping they were going to have the 8300H or the 8750H CPUs in here. Those 8th generation ones, but no, they went for the Kabulate one. So full specs are right up here if you want to check that out. But the reason to go for this model is the price. So the model I have here is the base one. So it's the i5-8250U. And it has only four gigabytes of RAM, which uh, you're probably thinking like, whoa, hang on, four gigabytes of RAM, why would you buy that? Well, because this in China sells for about 580 US only. So it's a lot cheaper than this model right here. But the key thing is, not only is it cheaper, you can actually upgrade the RAM on this. So this one I picked up from Trading Shenzhen. It comes on this plain brown box. So it looks like it doesn't actually have an inner box at all. They're kind of cheaped out as well on the packaging. But it should be well packaged and I don't think there should be any damage to this whatsoever. So I've actually just broken the seal on this and we'll check out what we got inside. Okay, so relatively well packed up there with this padding around it. Uh, in this box here, obviously we will have the power supply. So it has, for some reason, the Australian NZ plug there. I don't know why, but they seem to use different plugs there in China. Of course, there is an adapter that Trading Shenzhen have included. And here we have the power supply. The output is 19.5 volts, 3.33 amps. So it comes with a Mickey Mouse style plug on the end. Now these are very easy to source. Any electronic shop, computer shop will have these cables. So you can pick up one without having to use a power plug adapter. So just under the laptop, we have a leaflet here. Now this is just going to be all in Chinese, as you can imagine with a Chinese laptop. So no point in me going over that. It's just some sort of quick start guide, warranty card or something. All right, and time to check the weight of it first. It feels definitely heavier than the Mi Notebook Pro. And yes, it is. So it comes in at 2.18 kilos. That's about 180 grams heavier. So if we add the rather small power supply, uh, that brings it up now to 2.39 kilos and then with the plug so everything you need total carry weight is 2.54 kilos so that actually is not too bad for a 15.6 inch laptop and its thickness tops out to be about 20 millimeters there so that is definitely thicker than the Mi Notebook Pro as expected Xiaomi's gone with a simplistic look here, so there's no logos on the top of the lid. Now this is metal, so we've got an alloy here on the top, and the finish of it, the color, the gray they have used, is very similar to the Mi Notebook Pro, but you can see that one actually is a different shade. It's a lighter shade of gray, but the same kind of paint finish to them. So let's see if the keyboard can be opened one-handed for you one-handed openers out there. So yes, it can, as you can see, just, and oh, that actually looks pretty good. So we've got matte plastic here. It feels like a quality plastic they have used, like a hard ABS style plastic. A, a large touchpad that looks to be exactly the same size as the, uh, the Mi Notebook Pros. It has a smooth finish to it. Now the keys, they actually don't feel too bad at all. Very little flex. I'm pressing down hard on that keyboard, so that is good. Numerical keyboard there you can see we have. We've got print screen buttons, uh, page, up and down seems to be missing. Oh no, that's right here, the shortcuts you can see with the uh, numbered keypad there. And a power key isn't separated from the keyboard, but it's, it's in a good location there, so it doesn't actually look to be too bad. The laptop has two exhaust vents. They are located here and here, so that's where you get all the hot air coming out. And as for palm rest flex, no, that is very firm. It feels good. And I can see that this matte plastic they have used is going to end up picking up fingerprints and smudges, but not as bad as the MSI laptops I've reviewed. And we have matte anti-glare coating on the screen here, you can see, and then the bezels around the outside. Yes, they are rather large. Of course, they're larger than the Mi Notebook Pros, which has slimmer bezels left and right. We've got dual array microphones here, status LED for the webcam. This is a 720p uh, webcam, and you can barely make out the Xiaomi logo, which is right there in black, so very discreet, which is great. 
Xiaomi also went with rubber all around the outside. So this little lip here that sits against the palm rest, uh, that's not gonna get scratched up, it's not gonna rub, and using rubber there just gives it more of a quality feel. So good move there. This is as far as the screen will recline back. It doesn't go and lay right, right back, but this for most people should be fine, I feel. Now the screen has a, a, a little bit of flex there as expected, and when I close it down, and pressing hard on the lid, pushes in a little bit, but I don't think it's gonna be a case of that screen pressing up against the keyboard and marking it. For ports on the left, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, two USB 3 ports, HDMI 1.4, and then a gigabit LAN port. And then on the right, DC in for charging, status LED, USB 2 port, and then a SD card reader. Now this is not your ultra high speed spec reader, unfortunately, only the Mi Notebook Pro GTX model has that. Looking at the rear now, we've got two solid rubber feet that it sits upon. This is the intake vent here. Two downwards firing speakers. Now these are three watt ones with uh, Dolby audio tuning. So they should sound really good if they're anything like the Mi Notebook Pros. Gaining access to the internals is not too difficult. You just have to remove all the screws then pry off the rear. I just used my fingernails and pulled it up and it is very good. The build quality overall, I wanted to comment on that, that the palm rest, the finish of everything, the plastics used feel great. So you can see the two speakers right there. We have a one terabyte hard drive. Now there's a couple of positives over this model. In fact, things that are better than the Mi Notebook Pro, we've got upgradable wireless. If you're not happy with the one that they use, you can replace this, very easy to do. And here, of course, we have our upgradable RAM. The SSD can be upgraded as well. And the battery capacity is really only one area they've cheaped out here that I can see. So 40 watt hours only when we get 60 watt hours in the Mi Notebook Pro. So if you want the better battery life, that is of course is the model to go for. But overall they're calling the layout of it looks good. Of course I would need to test that out and see if it runs into thermal throttling or any other problems. And this is something I wish all notebooks had and they didn't always solder RAM onto the motherboard like they do with the Mi Notebook Pro. So we've got four gigabytes right here in this particular model. So you can add another four, give yourself a total of eight. And I assume that when you buy the eight gigabyte model, which is slightly more expensive, they'll probably just have an eight gigabyte stick here and you can add another eight giving you 16. But I'm gonna upgrade this now. So I've added two sticks of eight gigabytes, double data rate for 2400 megahertz HyperX RAM. And then you just need to place that shielding back on there. So I did have to set it up in English and it actually took quite a while. What I did was the method to upgrade to Windows 10 Pro and that involves adding Windows 10 Pro key. I bought one off eBay and then I upgraded it. I, well, I added English too. So you upgrade to Pro, add English. I do have a video on how to do that. It's within one of my videos. So there's a link in the description if you wanna know how to upgrade that. Otherwise, the free method, but it involves a lot more, is to do a complete clean install, install Windows 10, the CD key that's inside the BIOS will pull through, Windows will then activate as long as you install Windows 10 Home. So the version it does come with and ships with is more recent as you'd expect, so it is shipping with version of Windows 10, which is 1803. Now the display's default scaling is 125%. I'll put it on to 150 for the purposes of my video so you can see things a little clearer. But I wanted to just go over quickly the screen. So right now I have it on full brightness and I mean it's a it's an okay screen. It's definitely perfectly fine, acceptable, but the brightness tops out at only 200 lux. So ideally I like to see about 250 or over. So it's not the brightest of screens out there. I wouldn't go as far as to say it is dull. Now it will dim down very dim. And because it is a matte coated screen, anti-glare, I feel it's okay at this maximum brightness. I mean, it's all right. So this laptop has Realtek components in it, Realtek audio and Realtek wireless and the gigabit ethernet as well is uh, Realtek. So Realtek, it's the 8821SCE card, sorry. And I tested this in the ASUS FX504 and it's not a very fast card on this model here as well. It's gonna max out at about 150 megabits per second whereas other wireless cards, for example, in the Mi Notebook Pro, they will get well over 450 or around 400, but you can upgrade it. So that's one great thing about this. Now the CPU is on this particular model, the Core i5-8250U. This is eighth generation, the KB Lake R it's called, or the KB Lake U. So it is four cores, eight threads, maximum turbo of 
gigahertz. And our SSD is a Samsung, but unfortunately it's only SATA 3. However, you can upgrade and put a faster NVMe drive in there if you wanted to do that in the future. You could add, for example, a 970 Evo from Samsung, 256 gigabytes, and it would be very fast. So I'm just benchmarking the drive. In fact, that has finished there. And you can see for a SATA 3 SSD from Samsung that the speeds are good. Now this CPU with the 16 gigabytes of RAM that I added, as you saw in the start of the video, it gets this result here in Geekbench 4. So it's not a bad score considering the chipset, multi-core performance. I know that the new six core, the eighth gens, uh, the coffee-like ones, they can get right up to 20,000 multi-core score. But for what this is, it is actually quite good, very decent performance. Now we do have the MX110, and the OpenCL score here shows that it's about uh, a good, about half the speed actually of the MX150 that gets about, I think it's about 43,000 in the score. So yeah, it's well about 40% slower you could say. That's just a rough estimate. And if we take a look at that Nvidia GPU in greater detail here, this is an old GPU. Look at the release date. So it's a while ago now because of, it's actually before that because what happens is they've, cleverly relabeled this. So this is really a 920MX. So we have the 256 shaders on there, the CUDA cores. And if you have a look at the memory double data rate, five Samsung. Now this is good because there is a model, well at least of the 920MX that has double data rate three, completely crippling it. Cinebench R15, the current configuration posted 671 CB at about 56 frames per second. Now, if I recall correctly, I think it's the NVIDIA MX150 can do about 72 or 73 frames per second. So you can see how much faster it really is there. Now, there is one good thing, and that is those power limits are completely unlocked to us. Now, on the other models that I have reviewed, it really depended on the BIOS version, whether or not Xiaomi was actually going to let us play around with the voltage. Now, why do we want to do this? Well. We can go along here and we can undervolt a little. So normally the undervolt I do on this particular CPU is, is about this. So it is a 0 0.090. And then we can also increase the power limits too. This is going to boost the performance and that'll increase our CPU score. It'll hold the turbos then at 3.4 across all cores without any power limiting. It won't run into that maxes. So if I set this now, and now normally this could actually be a little bit too high, perhaps 40. I'll try that. And now we'll check Cinebench R15. And with that increased power limit and the undervolt, I managed to get it up to 709 CB. This is just the first run. So it's boosted the performance a little, but not quite as high as expected for some reason here. If we take a look at my little graph here now, you'll see that this is stock when I did the test. And you can see it holds a 3.4 gigahertz and then about there a power limit throttles down and that drops the top turbos on all of those cores. And this time around you can see that does not happen. And I've done really long tests with this same exact setting on my Mi Notebook Pro and it'll just hold that 3.4 gigahertz on all four cores as long as you want. And you can see the thermals here seem to be all right. Now I haven't tested this for hours on end but the max temp so far that I have seen is 83. So that was actually stock. So it's getting up there, but I don't believe at this point we're gonna reach thermal throttling. I'll have full details of this in future up and coming videos and the full review, of course. Time for a little speaker showdown here against the Mi Notebook Pro. So the Pro you'd expect to have slightly better sounding speakers, right? You're correct, it does. It does sound a little bit better, better bass, Definitely better trebles, but the loudness is about the same. Overall, I feel that the Mi Notebook, the speakers aren't bad, but I'll give you a sample of both of them now.
Yeah, you just can't beat those speakers in the Mi Notebook Pro. It has really impressive speakers for a 15.6 inch laptop. This sells for around about 800 US. Here I am now in the BIOS. There's not a lot to show you. So originally it was in Chinese as expected. So I changed it over to English. We've only got basic settings here, so no advanced settings. And what I'm about to do now is just to boot over to uh, Linux, test that out. And all you have to do is just go into the boot order and I've selected my Linux pen drive there. Okay, so screen brightness controls are working. The volume controls are working. Touchpad is also working. But what is not working, it does not like that real tech wireless card for some reason. So that's just a problem to do with drivers. At least we can swap out that card. You could put an Intel one or another one in there. I've had some time to do a little bit of typing on this keyboard. And overall, it is very decent, this keyboard. Good travel on here. The key quality is good. They have a slight, very ever so slight little tiny curve into them. A little bit like the Mi Notebook Pro's keyboard, but I do like the spacing of the Mi no Notebook Pro's. Touchpad as well, very similar, it's almost identical. It uses Windows Precision drivers. So no real difference there because we don't have the fingerprint reader. So this is the Mi Notebook Pro's keyboard, of course. I prefer the spacing of this one because it's just spaced out a little bit better and I'm, of course, used to it now using it for so long. And the fingerprint reader right there is another additional thing you get from the Pro model. But then I can see that the Mi Notebook, the budget version, is actually, I think, going to wear better than this one here because there's like a little bit of a stain to the uh, finish of the paint job on the metal on this with the palm rest. It's very easy to chip. The plastic is definitely suited more to, I feel, office and students and things like this because it's going to be much more durable, be able to take more of a beating, and it probably won't show those marks or any stains or anything like that being a black plastic. And even fingerprints, it's more resistant than most too. It's holding up quite well after using it now for quite a few hours. So taking a look at gaming performance, just very briefly, I may have a separate video with a complete gaming review on this. So what I've done is I have overclocked the GPU just to give it a helping hand because we know that this GPU is very weak. And my overclock, I can max out the core clock without any problems. Memory clock, I can probably push this even a little bit higher. So 750 is very good. But even so, with a title like uh, Wolfenstein here, it is struggling in 720p on the lower settings, as you'll see. It's um, semi-playable. It gets some really bad frame dips, as you can see. So the frame rate is really all over the place because it has actually run out, and it did warn me that it ran out of VRAM. So no more video memory because with the 2 gigabytes, this game really needs a little bit over than that. I think it needs like 4, 3 or 4 at least. So quite choppy this one, but one thing that is impressing me so far is the fan noise. It's it's like barely even on. It's incredible. More demanding title here. This is Call of Duty World War II. And you can see that we're getting playable frame rate with this one. This is on the recommended settings, which is 720p. So this is good to see. It depends on the title, but I think most games you will have to play on lower settings 720p with this. And remember, I have overclocked that GPU. So fan noise has been quite good so far. It's just on a low RPM at the moment, continuous. Temperatures reaching around about uh, 75 with the current conditions on the CPU, about 65 on the GPU, but I have seen the CPU get up to 83 when really pushing it hard benchmarking. But I wanted to check now just the temperatures, which seem to be really quite good. On the top here, you see it's getting up to 32. So they've done a very good job here with the cooling. Okay, 38 seems about the maximum. Remember that the Mi Notebook Pro gets up to about 48, 49 degrees here at the top. It does get really hot, even up to 50. And this is a lot cooler. That palm rest always seems to stay cool, around about 26 degrees there. So, so far in my initial afternoon with this laptop, the thermals are looking very positive. So I do think that Xiaomi here has a very interesting laptop. There's a lot of things I like about this. So for me, the screen, okay, it could be brighter, but it's for indoor use, it's perfectly fine. I like the fact that it's a anti-glare matte coated screen. The one on my Mi Notebook Pro is of course quite reflective. It's covered with the Gorilla Glass, a type of Gorilla Notebook glass they have on that one here. So th the build of it, it's very good. It's very solid. Okay, yes, it is plastic. But we do have, yeah, some metal on the lid here. That's going to be prone to scratches and damage there. But the hinges is very stiff. There's very little flex and move and things. And overall, 
the balance of it, the, the, the weight distribution, the weight of it, 2.2 kilos is good. Uh, typing on that keyboard, I do like it. It's not quite as good as the Mi Notebook Pro's keyboard, but it is very solid. There's not that much flex on it. And a little bit more cramped in, of course, because they have decided that uh, this time around they would include that numerical uh, keypad there. So you've got all your number keys and things on there that a lot of people do like. The look of it being minimalistic is great as well. I love the fact that you can hardly see any logos on it. You just see the Mi one down here. That's it. The only Xiaomi logo on this. Speakers are also loud. The touchpad has a nice smooth finish to it, and it does work really well, of course, using Windows Precision Drivers. It is basically the same exact touchpad, uh, just without the fingerprint reader in it. So you obviously miss out on a few things compared to the Pro model. You don't have quite as good speakers, the same loudness, but not the same quality of sound. You don't have the fingerprint reader. You've got a slower GPU in this one, of course. And the main thing is you have a smaller battery compared to the Pro model. The Pro model has 60 watt hours. This one has only 40. And in my testing so far, my estimates, remember just estimates, I'll have the full details in the full review of this laptop, are looking around about six hours. Because 40 watt hours for this kind of hardware is quite slim pickings, really. It depends on what you're doing to as well. So it could be four to six, hour, uh, five to six hours there. So it's not gonna have the greatest battery life out there. There'll be other options out there. So the big con to, is of course that this comes with Windows 10 in Chinese, but it's very easy to fix. You can either take a, a, a driver's dump, get all the drivers for it, and then you can install Windows. It'll pull through the CD key, the license that is in the BIOS, and then you won't have any trouble if you install Windows 10 Home, or you can do what I did, did and that is upgrade to Windows 10 Pro, and you keep the factory uh, recovery partition if you ever wanna reset it and resell it later on. It's very important to keep that for resale value, uh, most people just wipe the whole thing right out and you lose all of that when you do a clean install. So it does look very promising indeed. Uh, there's not much to really dislike about it, but I love the fact that we can upgrade the RAM. I mean, this thing sells for about uh, 580 US and that's only four gigabytes of RAM. But if you add another four gigabyte RAM stick, that's not a lot of money additionally. Then you have eight, it's running in dual channel. You get very decent performance. Power limits and the uh, undervolting is Eight available to us. It's it's an option that we can do this. You can tweak that undervolt a little bit. You can overclock the GPU quite a lot, actually, surprisingly. The Maxwell always did overclock quite well, so you can boost that right up and max that out. So gaming performance is a weakness of this one. If you want to game or get better performance, at least game in 1080p on low settings, then you go for the Mi Notebook Pro there as well. That's another reason to go for that model. So if you can't spend that additional, then this, I feel, is a good option. Now, of course, 580 US in China means that when you get it from shops and retailers, uh, they have their markup on top of that because they buy it from dealers and you've got expenses as well to import it and things like that. That's something else you need to factor in. So ideally, you're probably gonna be paying realistically, I would say about 650, but even so 650 for this laptop to me is a really good deal, especially in Europe. When you look at the spec, the build quality of this, what you're getting here in Spain at least for around that price, there is absolutely nothing really that I can think of that could compare to this. So they do have a winner, I feel, Xiaomi on their hands here. So far, really liking it. Oh, and another thing is the fan profiles and fan noise on this. Really, really good. Right now, the fan's not even on. And if I was using my Mi Notebook Pro, if it was connected to power, the fan would be on right now, probably. Very low setting, but it goes on and off. Fan profiles on that model aren't so great. But on this one here, the thermals seem really good. Fan profiles, excellent so far that most of the time light work and even some demanding work at times, you don't hear the fan at all. So they wait, the, the set a setting on there to get it up to about 55 degrees Celsius before the fan kicks in on a low RPM setting to help cool things down a little bit, but really good. But overall, looking like a decent laptop. I hope to catch you back with the final review of this one and perhaps maybe even a look at gaming on this if we can play some newer titles or older, less demanding titles on this here and what kind of settings we need to go with. And if you haven't, check out my review of the Mi Notebook Pro right up here and the Mi Notebook Pro GTX model too that's here that has the NVIDIA 1050 in that one with four gigabytes of RAM. Bye for now.